welcome to the channel this reading vlog is super exciting because i have been waiting since 2022 i think i finished the second book in june of 2022 so i have been waiting for this next book for a very long time and it came out yesterday and it was very crazy i live in grand rapids so this book was selling out like crazy i was an idiot and decided to wait until after work to go and buy it and I literally checked Meyer, Walmart, and Target all by where I worked and could not find a copy. And I was freaking out. And then I was in Target and this girl was like, hey, are you looking for this book? And I was like, yes, I haven't found it. Like I've gone here, I've gone here. And she was like, well, I know they still have it at Barnes and Noble, but I didn't have time to stop at Barnes and Noble. So I was like, well, that's not gonna help me. But then she said Target was still doing pickup orders of this book. And so I snagged myself a copy of House of Flame and Shadow. I am so beyond excited to read this book. I forgot how thick Sarah J Mass books are. So it's been a while since I have read something this long, but I know how captivating her books are. I know I'm gonna be drawn in and I am just obsessed. Like the cover is gorgeous. It's so thick. I like, I can't wait to dive in. And I will say I am a little bummed because this one is black and the first two are white. I have hardcovers in the whole series. And the first two are white with like the cool coloring on the side. So I was really hoping that this one would be white and gold or maybe even like black and gold. That would have been cool too. But either way, this book is in my hands now and I can't wait to read it. I read the first page yesterday because I didn't have any time to read and so I'm really hopeful tonight that I can actually start reading this and actually have time to like get invested and know what's going on because I'm not one of those people that does rereads before the release of a book. I'm like I'm gonna wing it and see if I remember while I'm reading. So I do, I couldn't forget the ending, like how could you forget the ending of the second book? So I was kind of trying to remember things as I was waiting for this book to come out because I don't want to be completely lost. Like I do want to remember things and I am going to try and take notes on this one. So that way I have a reference point for the next book because I'll be in the same boat. And it is also kind of depressing because I'm so excited to read this book. But at the same time, I'm like, as soon as you finish it, you have to wait again for the next book, which who knows when that's coming out but i am so excited for this reading vlog <laughs> hi friends i have a confession so i'm like over halfway done with house of flame and shadow and i have not vlogged a single minute of me reading this book i realized this week it was yesterday saturday i was like oh i don't have a reading vlog for this week and my next reading vlog will be this and then i was like wait a minute i don't have any footage of me reading this book i don't have anything not even when i got it from the store i don't have anything like i just have completely forgotten to film anything for this video so that's my confession and now that i'm about halfway through i can give you my no spoiler reactions because i don't want to spoil this for anyone else i know a lot of people still have not read sarah j mass so not everyone is currently reading this series. It is her newest series, Crescent City. And I also just don't want to be one of those people that spoils a really hyped up book. But it's kind of hard to talk about this one without giving any spoilers because it is the third one in the series and it's a pretty big deal. So I will just say I have been enjoying it a lot so far. I was more invested in the beginning because of how the second one ended and I just needed to know what was going to happen next and I've been waiting so long for this book. But honestly, I realized one of my favorite things about Sarah J Mass is how much she tortures her characters. She is not afraid to put them in the worst situations. And I was just thinking while I was reading this, like the way that she plots things in her mind must be insane because she takes her characters and puts them in like the worst situation ever. And then they like figure it out. And I'm just, yeah, it just makes you want to read the whole thing. And I will say, so there's a character named Therion, Therion, I don't know how you say his name. I'm going to say Therion. 
but people don't like him like on bookstagram people have been like roasting him and just talking about how they don't look forward to his chapters and i actually really like him so it breaks my heart and in this book he's basically wanted by like everyone and i won't say why and not wanted in a good way like he is basically making everybody mad everyone wants to kill him and so i am obsessed with him and in this book he is making terrible decisions but one of them is a terrible decision that is actually so good but that's all i can say about it so i'm really enjoying therian in this book he is one of my favorite characters in this series and then i just love the romance happening between so many characters like there's an enemies to lovers thing going on there's a they're finally together going on and then there's like this marriage of convenience going on i am just living for it and i just really really like the whole plot of this book and what is going on like this huge thing was basically found out in the second book. Like the first book starts off as this like murder mystery. The second book is like, holy cow, there's like this whole thing going on with the government and the city and all these other things. And this third book is like them trying to figure out how to overthrow the government basically and like figure out what's happening. And I am living for it, you guys. I want to read a lot of it today. Today's Super Bowl Sunday. So my husband and I will probably turn on the Super Bowl and I'll read while the game is going and like watch the commercials and also watch for Taylor Swift because, you know, you have to do that. But I'm so sorry, you guys. I have like no footage of me like starting this or reading this, but I am really, really enjoying it. So I'm hopeful to get a lot more reading done because it's also February 11th, at least I think so. Yeah, it's also February 11th and I have only been reading this for the month and I just really want to get more reading done. So my goal is to finish this this week and have a new video Saturday, but we will see. I finally finally finished it I feel like it has taken me so much longer than I wanted to but I am so excited also kind of sad that I finally actually finished reading it this massive huge book and honestly I want to be careful because I don't want to give any spoilers but I will say it was just so good to be back in a Sarah J Mass book the way that she writes fantasy is so captivating and intriguing and you just really feel like you're in the world because her imagery and the way that she just gets you invested in the story is so perfect. So I am sad to be done with this one and to not be in this world anymore in Crescent City. I just wish I could like live in this book, but I will say it was probably a four star read just because I have really liked the Crescent City series. I really liked the second one, but I feel like there were so many theories and things circulating about what would happen in this book that I was a little bit disappointed. Like I was expecting a lot more than I should have been. So I learned a lesson that from now on, I will not go into a rabbit trail of looking at theories and speculations and hearing all these things that people are thinking too much about. 
because it did kind of take away from the experience of reading this book when you're expecting all these crazy things to happen and then they don't and you're kind of like oh but <laughs> it was still such a good read i mean her plot like the way that she maps out her story and the way that things happen in the characters are just so good and intriguing and it rips out your heart and you're so worried and this one the all of that i mean she kind of has the formula down for how to torture the reader while she's torturing her characters so you just feel all the feelings and i will say my favorite character in the series is probably lydia i loved lydia and rune like a part of me almost wishes that the book was more about them than bryce and hunt because for some reason bryce and hunt just were not my favorites in this one and i'm not 100 percent sure why but I was so much more invested in Lydia and Rune and I just wanted more of their story. But that is all that I'm going to say about this for now. If you are someone that doesn't want spoilers, then I will thank you for watching and feel free to click off of this video because I do want to get into some spoilers if you want to talk about them and if you're interested. But if you haven't read any of Crescent City, if you haven't even read any Sarah J Mass, if you don't want spoilers, then please click off this video. You have been warned. <laughs> So the full review, not spoiler free because I just need to talk about it. So the second book ends with Bryce falling into the Akatar world and she meets Asriel and Nesta. And so this book actually starts with her in their world and she's walking through caves with Asriel and Nesta. And in the beginning, like she's thrown in jail. She won't talk about anything. And I was so excited. That was probably the best part of this book was having the worlds combined. I did think that there was going to be more with that, that at the end they would all kind of come in and they didn't. So that's why I was saying with all the theories and all the other things going on, I was pretty bummed because I was just expecting so much more than what actually happened. And yeah, so that was my favorite part at the beginning of this book. Like every time it got to a chapter where Bryce was in the caves with Nesta and Asriel, I was like, oh, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. And then she kind of just leaves their world and I was like, ah, well, that's over. And honestly, nothing really happened other than them learning like the history of their worlds. But I just thought that Amryn and more of the characters would be part of it and then nothing really happened with that. So I'm still interested to know who Amryn is because I thought we would find out in this book and we didn't. So there were more complicated parts, but we still don't know who Amryn is or what she is. So I will be excited to find that out hopefully at some point. I guess we'll see what happens. But my favorite aspect of this book other than Bryce being with Nesta was Lydia and Rune because Lydia from the start has been one of my favorite characters like the fact that she's Agent Day was probably the most shocking part of reading this book because she's this torturer and she's evil and you think that she's super bad and then in this one you find out more of her motivation for being the hind and why she tortures people and why she got involved and how she became a spy and so that part was so cool because i just love lydia and then having her become what she does at the end when she's actually able to control fire and has all this magic and all these things that was just so exciting. I just think she is probably the best character in the series. I am obsessed with her. She's my favorite. And there's a little bit of a hint that she might be from a family line from Throne of Glass. So I am really excited to see what happens with that because Lydia can transform into a stag. She is fae, but she's also, I think, half witch, half fae. I can't remember. And then she controls fire. So that all sounds like Eileen from Throne of Glass. And I feel like Lydia is somehow connected to them, which means that all of the worlds could still combine at some point, which would be just absolutely incredible. I really miss the Throne of Glass series. I wish I owned the books so I could go back and reread them because it has been a couple years but I remember it pretty well and I just really, really wish I could go back and read the series again. 
I loved, 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 loved Lydia and Rune and just the aspects of their stories that were tied together in this one and finding out more about Lydia and my book I got from Target. So my bonus chapter was actually Lydia and Rune, which was just so sweet. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know which bonus chapter I had. So then I got to the end and I was like, you know, it kind of worked out perfectly because I wanted the bonus chapter that was Nesta, Asriel, and Bryce. But then I got the one that was Lydia and Rune, who I was more invested in at the end anyway. So it kind of worked out. I will also say, Ithin or Ithin, I'm not sure. I'm going to say Ithin because it seems more like that would be his name. But I loved that Sarah J Maas just added so much to Ithin and Therian's character because Therian, first of all, with the whole arranged marriage and taking Sathya as his wife, I am so excited to see what she does with that, even though Sathya does run away and she's kind of off doing her own little thing right now. But I feel like there is going to be a fourth Crescent City book, so I feel like it's going to actually focus on Ithin or Ithin and Therion more and like the side characters because there's a little bit of a build up with them. So I'm really excited to see everything that happens with that because it is just so exciting the way that she built up those characters and added so much to both of them, especially Therion's little tiny little bit of a love story that's happening. And then Ithin becoming the prime of all the wolves when he starts off as this grieving like little sunball captain and then he becomes prime and that whole thing was just absolutely crazy. But I was the least invested in Bryce and Hunt who are the main characters of this book but I felt like their love story is just so tied up like they know that they are each other's soulmates and they know all these things and they're already married so it was kind of like the high stakes that we had in throne of glass where eileen and rowan are separated and they're trying to get back together and it just felt like that in this book but i just didn't care as much and i don't really know why they were just not my favorite part of this book, even though I loved them in the first two books, but in this one, I just kind of didn't care. Although at the end, when Bryce sacrifices herself, I was kind of like, there is no way that she is going to kill off Bryce. There's absolutely no way. But then it seemed hopeless and it seemed like that was exactly what was happening. But I was like, there's no way. There is absolutely no way. And of course she brings Bryce back to life so they get their little happy ever after which I was really excited about and the whole war with like Apollyon and I'm blank Adis coming into the world and helping them with the war it was just so it was such a good wrap up it was just tied together so well and it makes me very curious to know what the fourth book would be about because there wasn't really any cliffhangers other than the fact that the whole government has been overthrown and they just kind of have to figure out what to do with Crescent City after all of this stuff has happened. But you guys, I just, her books are so good. The way that she's able to keep them all straight and just add so much to these book characters, it is incredible to me. And I did really enjoy this one. I miss being in her fantasy worlds because she just does such a great job at writing them. And she has hinted about bringing all of the books together, all of the series together. So if that ever happens, I will lose my mind. And she's already hinted at it in both books. So we will see what happens. But for now, this was a really great conclusion. Everything wrapped up really nicely. Everything was kind of a happily ever after. So I'm not as excited for book four just because I don't really know what is going to happen and the stakes are not high at all and I just don't know how she's going to have a carry on into that but she did in this one allude to so much more happening in Nesta's story which makes me really excited because Nesta is one of my favorite characters in Akatar. so I can't wait for that. I know the next book that she has coming out will be part of the Akatar series and I'm hopeful that it will be about Nesta and Cassian again instead of Elaine because she's still not really my favorite, but we shall see. I probably have so much more to say about this book, but I can't think of anything else right now. So I'm going to end this little 
rant talk through of this book and thank you guys so much for watching i'm sorry that this one doesn't have as much reading content i was so invested in finishing this book that i honestly just didn't really think about filming until i was like halfway through and then it hit me that i hadn't filmed anything so anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed comment below if you want to talk more feel free to dm me on bookstagram and i will see you soon bye